The world's second largest economy is still facing downward pressure. House prices in China continued to drop in November in 70 larger Chinese cities, even though the pace of decline was slower than October. Property investments tumbled around 20%. The amount invested is almost 10% less than in 2021 so far this year. Industrial output, a closely watched gauge for economic activity, has been growing at a slower rate for three months. In November, it inched up more than 2% compared to the same month last year. Retail sales decreased by around 6% to hit the third lowest level this year, despite fairly strong online orders. As China is battling flare-ups of COVID, the government's encouraging the spending and consumption. It's just announced a target aimed at further expanding domestic demand, aiming to raise the scale of consumption and investment by 2035. Consumer confidence has seen steep drops this year, and markets are concerned about whether that can be rebuilt in the next few months. I've been talking to Daniel Zipser from McKinsey & Company about how China is navigating that. The year 2022 has been a year of resilience. Uh, I think on the one hand side, uh, we've seen a continued rise of the upper middle class. We see salaries increasing, we see low inflation levels. At the same time, we've also seen a substantial decline in consumer sentiment in April of this year. And it has not recovered uh, until today. So what are companies doing to try and encourage consumers to spend? I think we see a number of initiatives trying to get uh, consumers back to spending. In a time where the shopping mall traffic is declining, there has been a substantial shift um, to digital channels. And particularly the social commerce has actually seen great att attention. The large platforms in the social commerce screen have seen very strong and healthy growth in, in this year. And that has been an area where successful brands have been doubling down on in 2022. And what's about the kind of consumers we're seeing in China? Is the makeup of those kind of people changing? I think what we've seen this year is that particularly the upper middle class, around 130 million households in, in China, has continued to actually increase their spendings whereas the middle class and below has actually seen a decline in their spending power. I think we see uh, stronger growth when it comes to food and beverage products. We see less when it comes to fashion or, or beauty. So those are areas which have seen decline. We've seen a rise of uh, local Chinese brands. Local Chinese brands in 2022 particularly uh, has seen actually a substantial increase in their market share. So what will all these changes mean for China's economy, do you think? China has been uh, converting the economy for a number of years from an investment-driven economy to a consumption-driven economy. That has seen a bit of a challenge in 2022. Going forward, uh, we anticipate that China will need to continue drive innovation and will also need to continue the journey to a more consumption-driven economy in 2023 and beyond. So uh, consumer confidence really has taken a bit of a knock this year, hasn't it? Uh, what's the outlook, do you think? Uh, are things looking up? You're very right. I think in April 2022, there has been a very substantial decrease in the consumer confidence. It has actually uh, led to an all-time low. The consumer sentiment in China has never been as low as it is right now. We anticipate that there is an opportunity for it to, to increase. However, we need to prepare that we don't know when it will increase again, and we also don't need the pace. So we need to be prepared that this could be a longer journey.